is uh, I ask you to forgive me because I can't stand before you know a long time. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I looked in the mirror this morning when I was shaving and I said, this ain't the same guy that started off for you, Lord. But it's the same heart and the same mind. Oh, glory. <clears throat> Scripture says this in Matthew um, 6 and 33. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, what do you think that means? So I read the things here in, in the Word, but I'm telling you right now, church, God sees our every need. He said He would supply our every need. All we worry, seem to worry about a lot of times is when we kneel to pray, oh God, I need this. God, this happened. God, help me with this. God, help me with that. When we ought to be praying to the kingdom of God to be at hand. Right. Yes. I don't want to see nothing any worse than I want to see this church grow. I want to see people saved. I want to see people that know they're on their way to heaven. And that's, that's the only reason I'm hanging around. I can tell you right now. Brother Stewart's doing a great job. By the way, I'm glad to welcome him back. Yes, Praise the Lord. I, I, no. I kind of made a mistake. I felt like last Sunday I, I tried to preach. And I, I, about halfway through it, I had to sit down. And uh, so I decided I'd take a more general approach to it today. Praise the Lord. Instead of uh, instead of letting my emotions show and, and I can't help my emotions I, I get emotionally when I feel the presence of the Lord Amen. praise the Lord <clears throat> John 4 and 23 through 24 says but the hour has come and now is when the worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. There is something about being in the spirit of God as you begin to worship Him. And I promise you, you won't know what the fellow is doing on the next, the, the person doing on the side of you. You won't worry about the person that's running around the building. You won't worry about the person jumping over the pew. You'll be worshiping. You'll have your mind on Jesus Christ, yes. the one who died for you, the Savior of us all. Yes. Can you say it again? Amen. Yes. And uh, I'm gonna take my watch out because I'm gonna finish in a decent time. Praise the Lord. Uh, <coughs> We worship God with prayer, singing, Bible study. And by the way, when I say Bible study, I'm not talking about Bible study here. I'm talking about Bible study at home. And uh, we worship Him here when we do Bible study too. But church, everybody ought to have a time to study the Word of God. Amen. It does something to you. It won't turn you loose all day long. And uh, in one other way, I wrote down here that we worship God is uh, in communion and foot washing, which we're fixing to do. I, I might just have to get a one foot washing. Praise the Lord. I, I got one, one leg well and I messed up my foot yesterday on the other foot. But what, we, what we're striving for is revival. Right. Now, revival is not a bunch of people coming in and getting the Holy Ghost and 
being baptized. That ain't, that's not revival for us. Revival for us is for, for us to be revived. We need to, we need to see God's face, it said. Uh, first, the kingdom of God. All these things be in. Let me tell you something. I haven't had to walk nowhere in a long time. God is always about I might go out the door today and that truck might not crank. But I'm telling you right now, God has provided me a way to go, a place to live, uh, and too much to eat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But God is good. And, and like I can tell you, God supplies your every need. But we won't revival for ourselves. And that, that makes one strong, healthy, and active. Strong, healthy, and active. Remember that. That's what revival is. You become strong in the Word of God. Strong in His Spirit. You become healthy in, in, in the things that you know that, that, uh, that God does for people. And you become active by helping bringing what God wants to His people. And, you know, I can, I can call my students and say, oh, brother, I, I don't mess with that other foot. I just can't come. I took a hundred-something dollar pair of shoes and cut the tongue out of it and put it on and said, I'm going. You know what? I wasn't working when I bought these shoes. I don't forget if Sister Jennifer said, if she could tell you how much they were. I hadn't been bought them that long. But there was a hundred and something dollars. But you know what? God seen to it I had that hundred and something dollars. And he'll see to it if I need another hundred and something dollars and I'll get that. Because God wants to do for you in everything you do. Yeah. Don't, don't let the devil come in and say, oh, well, God just done forgot about you because... Uh, Something happened again. No, don't let that happen, church. Stay strong and healthy and active. And you, you know what? I, I moved back here to the back here because I thought, well, I'll be closer to the bathroom. And if I have to go to the bathroom, then I won't disturb the church. And I felt like God spoke to me. I said, Lord, why? I, I don't know, I, what, three, four, five weeks back there. And I sat there one Sunday morning and I said, well, I don't feel the Holy Ghost as strong as I used to. And I felt like the Lord said, you left the anointing. So I moved back up here and I danced in the Spirit twice on feet I can't hardly walk on because I felt the Holy Ghost. And I was obedient to God. Right. And I was seeking the kingdom of God. Amen. I was seeking what God told me I, I need to be seeking. And uh, you get back there and you, I got, I wasn't very active. I didn't, oh, Brother Stewart, you, you can do it all. God bless him, he did. And he's very capable, very capable. Spurgeon once said this, he said, if there were some among you who would go home and pray for a revival, men where faith is large enough and their love far enough to, to, to learn from this moment to exercise unceasing intercessions that God would empower among us and do wonders things wondrous things here as in the times of former generations all things are possible to him that believe now church he's talking about he, he was talking about the things that happened in the Bible pretty impressive things but how many of us you know we <coughs> I don't know about you, but when I felt I need to go to the altar and I need to pray through to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, I felt 
ashamed of my sins. I, and I, I just, I, I would have done anything, Brother Stewart. I would have begged. I would have, just anything God would have spoke me to do for him to fill me, refill me with the Holy Ghost. And so he did. But we have to get a desire like David had. He said, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so my panteth my soul after thee. Or he said, another place he prayed, he said, Oh God, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Now that's something, asking God, when, when can he appear before him? When, he, when can I come to you, Lord? And, and of course, the Lord, he knows our every need. He knows every move, everything's on your mind. If he, if he knows every hair on your head, he knows everything on your mind, I promise you. And God is waiting to do miracles for you. It ain't all the preacher, but I'll tell you something. On the day of Pentecost, it was like all in one mind and one car. This morning we stood and prayed for that young man. I wasn't going to stand up because it's kind of hard for me to stand up. But you know what I done? I pushed this thing aside and I said, God, I'll even stand. I want to be in unity. In unity. I want the same thing that every one of you want. I want to see that baby stay. I want to see him completely healed. I want him to be a preacher. I want him to be a soul winner. I want him to be able to go out and just to look at him and people just, just run to the altar. I'm ready for that. I don't know about you. Yeah. It don't, it don't have to be me. I'm not, I'm not asking that I would, I would be that person. But I'm asking God to heal If nothing else, heal him for that. Yes. Heal him for your purpose. David prayed, O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land. Oh, church, if we was ever in a dry and thirsty land, we in one this morning. Yes. You hear me? We're in one this morning. There's people out there that's just as bad off as that young man is because of their ignorance of God. They don't have any idea what they're doing or which way they're going or they, they, they've been fooled or the Bible says the devil comes as an angel of light. People go to church in a lot of places and, and, and they don't hear the truth. You know what? If I could get up and hear you, Sister Brenda, I would. For anything, and for the littlest things, they ain't it. But I can't do that. But I know a man that can. Praise the Lord. But I could draw people here like just crazy if I did. They don't, but you know, who, who would they be worshiping? Me or God? There is divine healers that has a power of healing, and I believe in that. I'm not saying that that's not true, but I'm just telling you, there is a difference to those who are trying to draw a crowd and that almighty dollar and the man that literally cares for your soul. That loves you. That don't care what you look like or where you come from or what you got or what you're going to get. Nor do they care for what you put off the plate. They accept what's there and that's it. To see thy power in it and thy glory so as I have seen thee in sanctuary. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and we got, uh, we got some scriptures that I 
I'm going to pass over them. One scripture is John, 1 John, yeah, 1 John 3 and 20 and 22, and it says this. It says, as whosoever, as whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because he keeps his commandments, because we keep his commandments. Y'all forgive me, I'm getting old. My eyes ain't no good. And do those things that, that are pleasing in his sight. How many times do we do something that's really pleasing in God's sight? We think of something that pleases us it, it, is always, we're going to get something out of it. But that ain't the way the Lord looks. Believe me, he didn't receive anything out of going to the cross and dying for me and you. Not one thing did he receive for his good. But I'm telling you right now, he did it for our good. He did it that we might be saved. That we might be healed. That we might be uh, uh, salvaged from a, a, a dry and thirsty land. <coughs> Psalm 139 and 23 says this. It says, if our heart is not right with God, any prayer but the prayer of repentance is in vain. Y'all ever think about that? I repent before I pray almost every time I pray. I say, oh God, forgive me for my ignorance. God, forgive me for, for just anything. If, I, if there's something I know I've done wrong, I ask God, forgive me for that. And I'm, I'm no better than anybody else in here. Every now and then I slip up and do something wrong. But God forgives us of things that we don't that we do is not right. And I'm, they don't give us the right to go out and sin. Make sure I say that. The biggest thing is uh, Psalms uh, is saying here. David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. <coughs> Seeking God's face includes searching our own heart. What's wrong with me, God? Think about it. So many times, so many times in my walk with God that I knelt in prayer that I didn't worry about what was wrong with me. I worried about what was wrong with somebody else first. But what's wrong with me first, God? Let me stand with clean lips before thee. Let me utter words out of my mouth that are clean and are, are strong and are, are what you want me to say. <clears throat> Tell you a little story right quick. I, was, I felt like I was thrown into this. Uh, the pastor was here. He left. My, I tried to tell him then, why did he go and just leave me in charge? He could come back. But no, he didn't want to do that. So the church made me the pastor. And I didn't know nothing about preaching all of those less pastor. I'll be honest with you, I didn't. But I prayed and I asked God. God told, spoke to me and told me, he said, if you follow in my footsteps, I'll teach you. And I wanted to know, God, how, you going to send somebody to come along and teach me? Because I didn't know. I didn't realize that God could teach you, but he, he can take experiences in your life if you let him, and he'll teach you right from wrong. Right. He'll teach you the path of righteousness. But if you just let it go, you won't. We are, we're supposed to have a heart that paths after God, that seeks the kingdom of God, that looks out for our brother and our sister in love and fellowship 
Man, ain't nothing wrong with fellowship. I promise you. Right. If, if I'm, if I'm at my home by myself a whole lot since my wife died, and I promise you, fellowship, fellowship is very important. And I'm not talking about just between a man and a woman. I'm talking about between human beings. It's good to fellowship with people. It's good to talk to people. <coughs> One thing before we talk to God, we got to empty ourselves so that He can fill us with Himself. All right. First John three and twenty says this: For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Praise the Lord. So we have, we have to stay in a, 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 a position that we always feel condemnation when it should be felt. Now, we ain't talking about man's uh, condemning you. Know, man ain't got a right to condemn you. Right. But God, if we leave our heart tender and open to Him and in love with God, will condemn you of whatever you need to be condemned of. And you may not be have to be condemned of nothing for all I know. <clears throat> Seeking his face has the mean that we seek him, his smile of approval on all things. We acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways, Proverbs 3 and 6. To to know that God is pleasing with everything we do is is uh, you have to stay in touch with God, or you you won't. You know what? I I could <clears throat> one way I I can tell is when I do something ain't pleasing to God, I feel it real quick. Right. I feel condemnation when that happens, awful quick. And I know that I'm, I'm going down the wrong road or down the wrong path. And uh, if you ever traveling, you step on something that hurts your foot, you got to, you go a different route. Remember when you were kids and you're walking in the yard and you, you run across some stickers? You didn't go back that path the more, did you? Because it hurt. It's the same thing you learn from when God allows you to, to learn something. You don't do that anymore. You know, that's, that's shame our children on like that. Oh, I feel that way sometimes. But all children misbehave. And it's up to us to, to get them to mind. <coughs> But so is God's children. <clears throat> so is God's children. And He loves you just as much as we love us. Yeah, that, I, everybody in here is daddies and mamas. I'm pretty sure anyway. But you ever whoop your child and felt like you're sorry for doing spanking him? Man, before I got the Holy Ghost, I'd take my bed off and wear one out. If I had to, I wasn't going to make them mine. But you know what? They didn't do a whole lot of good. They are individually children, and they're going to react to whatever we do, however we do it. And the same thing with us. We're going to react to God the way we want to please Him. I know... Uh, I used to do this, I, I was a heavy equipment operator all my life, and, and uh, before I started working pipeline, I used to have to run these big rigs and move them way up in the air and look up, man, your neck and almost kill you. So I decided one day I'd just put uh, Jennifer, Danny, or one of them, I don't know which one it was, I made them kneel on their, their knees 
And I said, hold your head straight up and look at the ceiling. Didn't take about a minute to do that. And he was like, oh, Daddy, I'll behave. Daddy, I won't do that no more. But I mean, you think about it, church. There's a, there's a, uh, oh, I can't think of what I want to say now. Uh, uh, not, a, I don't want to say penalty, but that, it's a penalty to, to you doing something wrong. It's always a penalty. You got you, you have to pay the penalty one way or the other. Whether you was a, a child, your daddy, your mama made you do it a certain way, or, or now you're grown, you got to, everybody's got to obey the law, don't they? For a long time, I made this statement, even from behind the pulpit, if you don't obey, if you can't obey God, you're going to get in trouble. And nine times out of ten, if you can't obey God, you're going to get in trouble with the law. But if you got to obey the law, and you, if you don't obey mom and daddy, you don't want to obey God, you ain't going to want to obey the law. Just thank God for His forgiveness, church. Thank God because He's a merciful God that loves us. Uh, Seeking God's face includes doing whatever it takes to bring the assurance of victory. Sometimes we have to fast. I mean, I've seen things that uh, that I fasted for personal things, but there was always it was always in the kingdom of God. I never fasted for a new pickup truck. I never fasted for an, another job. I never fasted for uh, uh, nothing else I can think of outside of something for God. I fasted before because I was asked to preach somewhere or something. I wanted the service to go the way God wanted it to go. I fasted because I wanted to see somebody saved. I'll never forget, my brother-in-law saw me one time I said, well, tell me something. Because me, uh, he, uh, his, let's see, his, Dennis was my brother-in-law and his brother-in-law. And I tried to talk to him about uh, uh, the Lord, and it didn't do no good. And I asked him, I said, well, how did you win him to God? He said, well, he said, I tell you, he said, I went on seven day fast and told him I was fasting for him. A seven day fast for one man. And I learned something. I, I was young in the Lord. I learned something that day. It's more important to fast for someone else or, or something that would see this child that's being operated on today, that's worth fasting for. Right. I promise you. Way more than it would be if Brother Netterville hurt his foot. I promise you. For that and for spiritual things that you need, We praise the Lord. Uh, but church, we need to become seekers of God's Spirit. We need to become people who want to see. Yeah, I, I'm gonna tell you something now, and, I, and I'm not talking about brother. Brother Stewart at all. But it's a shame when the pastor of the church has got to get up and almost beg people to fast. And I ain't saying he's got to do that. Ain't that a way in this church? 
There is churches where the pastor's got to get them and almost beg them to fast. Beg them to pray. Beg them to come to church early and pray. Beg them to... Let me tell you something, church. This is your church. And you have a... Uh, 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 God, uh, y'all forgive me, my poor mind is, you have a, 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 a obligation to God, not to me. Maybe a little bit to this pastor, but, but mainly to God. You have an obligation to God to seek His face and His kingdom in this church. You know what? We ought to, see, we ought to be seeing cripples healed. Yeah. That will not be nobody that sits on our pews that's sick of any, anything. Amen. We ought to, and whose fault is it? It's ours. Because we don't see God's face for what we need. I seen a I seen a lady preacher call my daughter out and tell her she said, I see oil running down in front of the palm of your hand. And it's a healing oil. And she never I told her several times, you should never forget that. But she let people make her think that she thought she was better than everybody else because God gave her that gift. And we should, we should never, ever, ever get jealous of somebody who God has gave a gift to. You might need it someday. I'm serious. Brother Scrooge, a young man, he's got a good mind. He's got a good health. And I knew that I was on the decline. And I told him, I said, I, I, I want you to be my assistant. So we went on like that for a while, and then we decided to make him co-pastor. And I'll tell you the truth about it. <laughs> I let him pastor. Because I think he's the man for the job. I know it. I know it. He's the man that's supposed to stand behind this pulpit when I'm dead and gone. And preach you this word. And I'm telling you, church, if you if we'll all get behind, I'm going to say we, because I need you to. We, if we all get behind Brother Stewart and reach out for what he wants or what he's trying to get us to do, yeah. this church will grow. Yes, and all the Bible says, gates of hell shall not prevail Amen. against it. So that all the hell can't stop this church from growing. Amen. But we have to be in unity in love and kindness to one another. And if you seek God's face, you learn how to do that. Right. Don't be no more getting mad at sister so and so because she, she, I think she told somebody something. Or brother so and so because I think he told somebody something. Or brother so and so didn't come shake my hand. You know, I'm telling you, they got some people have got some funny thoughts. It might just be because, and it's a church grows, you can't shake everybody's hand. I've had right at 50, 55 people going here at one time, and I couldn't shake all their hands. Can you imagine when it's 255? Well, brother, they'll be there and they're going to give crap. But if you believe that, there's something wrong with you. This Bible says all things are possible to him that believe. 
this church can be just as big as any church in the area. Matter of fact, it ought to be bigger. Because we got stuff that they don't got. I'm, I'm not going to call any names in any church, but you know as well as I know, there's pretty good size from down here, and pretty good size from up there, and pretty good size from over there, and pretty good size from back here. So that surrounds us. But this one right here is a good church. And there's no reason it not to be growing. No reason. So we're going to seek God's face, are we not? Amen. We're going to fast. We're going to pray. When Brother Stewart says do it, we're going to do it. And, and we're, going, we're just going to love God. We're going to love God because God is worthy, church. He is worthy to be praised. He's worthy that we love Him. He's worthy that we talk about Him. He's worthy that we witness about him. Amen. 